Uh, my name is Jae Young Lim, and today I'll talk. I'm here to talk about uh, simulating workflows for uh, aerial robotics with the PXO Autopilot project. So uh, we'll first go through an uh, introduction of uh, the PX4 simulation environment, um, a basic workflow demo, and um, explain how you can integrate your own vehicle into the simulation, your own operating scenarios and environments. And we go through um, a recent integration into the JSP sim, which enables you to simulate uh, more realistic flight dynamics. So the PX4, uh, PX4 Autopilot project supports various simulations such as JMAF sim, uh, Gazebo, uh, JSB sim, and other simulations such as AirSim. Um, and they all serve a di different purpose. For example, um, JMAF sim is a very lightweight simulation that is optimized for uh, flight control developers to iterate quickly. Gazebo is a more robotics-oriented uh, simulator where um, you can simulate various actuators, sensors, and uh, environments. Um, and JSB Sim is um, a simulation uh, geared towards uh, accurate flight dynamics, which we'll, we'll uh, revisit later. You can run the PX4 simulation on either a software in the loop simulation, meaning you can run the PX4 autopilot directly on your computer, or a hardware in the loop simulation where you can run uh, the autopilot on the flight controller and make it communicate with your simulator. The simulation runs in a lockstep scheme um, where the flight stack sends an actuator control which triggers a uh, one time step in the simulation and the simulation returns um, updated sensor information to the flight stack, which um, also progresses one step and um, it continues on uh, this loop. Uh, this ensures the simulation and the flight stack is in sync uh, and not uh, you don't have uh, unpredicted results depending on your uh, performance of the uh, system you're running. And also, um, uh, you can support uh, various um, sensor information. And the messaging is done through uh, Hill uh, um, Mavlink messages, uh, which you can show uh, see in this diagram. So why do we care about simulation? Um, uh, using simulation, uh, it's very useful uh, to demonstrate behaviors whenever you have a version update of your software or uh, when you're actively changing the code. Um, also, PX4 uh, uses um, simulation to do testing. For example, if you make a pull request, um, the continuous integration testing will run a software in the loop simulation on all vehicle targets to ensure that you didn't introduce any unexpected uh, behaviors on other vehicle types. Also, um, simulation uh, decreases the need of for you to go out and flight testing which uh, increases your development cycle. So to give you an example, um, at Opterian, uh, we use end-to-end uh, -end, workflow simulation using software in the loop. So as you can see on the right, this is the Opterian mission control, which is the ground control station uh, we use, and it is connected to the simulated vehicle. And the ground control station does not know whether you are connected to a real vehicle or a simulated vehicle and uses the same uh, messaging protocol, which is Mavlink. Um, and this enables you to basically uh, test all features that you will uh, be using on the real vehicle. And um, as you can see, all the gimbal controls and camera controls are working. And the behavior is identical to the real vehicle since you are actually running the same software. You can run a uh, software in the loop simulation through a make target in the source code of the PX4 autopilot project where all the simulation uh, interfaces are included as a submodule, or you can use ROS um, to active uh, rapidly prototype and uh, integrate uh, into the autopilot. Um, to develop in ROS, we use a package, as Farang mentioned, um, MavROS, uh, which is a bridge that translates ROS topics into Mavlink. And this talks to the flight stack, and which um, is running, uh, communicating with the simulation in lockstep. 
this is very useful in integrating into real vehicles because your flight stack is communicating with the same protocol and you can just swap out um, into a real hardware which enables you to uh, deploy your um, simulated uh, uh, applications into a real vehicle without changing any of your code. You can also simulate multiple vehicles um, using either natively in the autopilot project or using ROS. And this enables you to uh, simulate complex uh, missions as you see on the right. So how do you uh, integrate your uh, vehicles into the simulation? So we focus on uh, the gazebo uh, simulation environment, which is composed into three parts, which is the model, the vehicle, the world, which uh, could be your environment or your parading scenario, and plugin, which can be uh, all, all kinds of sensors or um, payloads that, and actuators that are integrated into your vehicle. The actuator commands that are sent uh, from PX4 uh, goes into a gazebo plugin called the gazebo Mavlink interface. And this uh, parses the information in the Hill actuator Mavlink message and passes it to various plugins that uh, need this information. Uh, for example, um, it passes the actuator commands to the gazebo model model plugin, which simulates the, um, the uh, the propeller uh, thrust and the lift drag plugin, which uh, simulates the control surfaces of the vehicle. Um, and as you can see on the right, uh, you can simulate com complex uh, vehicle configurations as a tilt rotor um, vertical takeoff and landing vehicle. Um, also, uh, sensors are simulated either using gazebo model plugins or sensor plugins. And since uh, there, the sensors are accurately modeled. We can uh, test features, as you can see on the right, where um, the fixed wing uh, throw takeoff is demonstrated in Gazebo, where uh, the uh, it detects a free fall when you throw the vehicle, and then it starts the takeoff sequence of the fixed wing vehicle. Uh, not only can you simulate um, uh, sensors or actuators, you can also simulate uh, various uh, uh, fail safe or uh, flight termination scenarios, as you can see on the right. Um, this is when PXR goes into a flight termination state uh, as a fail safe and triggers a parachute. And this kind of um, operating scenarios uh, greatly um, enhances the safety uh, of your uh, testing without risking a real vehicle or your pilot. To simulate um, environments, we use the gazebo world. So uh, world is an independent uh, definition of the model. Therefore, you can uh, spawn different models into the same world for evaluation, or uh, you can spawn multiple vehicles into the same world. And uh, you can change the location or the weather, which means the wind and gust, or the physical granularity of the physics. Um, so the reason you want to specify the location um, is to align the map UI of the ground control station. For example, um, on the right, you see the Baylands model. And as you can see on the map, um, the 3D model, the 3D world um, actually includes um, the realistic terrain and uh, scenery as in the real uh, location. This can be done through the spherical coordinates um, flag. And this is useful to uh, simulate uh, various operating scenarios. You can also um, simulate weather. Uh, the most influential weather properties are uh, wind and gust. And uh, you can surface features um, such as the weather vane feature, where for VTOL vehicles, um, it would uh, turn the heading into uh, where the wind is blowing from. However, uh, while Gazebo is very useful on uh, simulating these various scenarios, um, it, when coming to dynamics, it, it is not that accurate. For example, the lift drag plugin of Gazebo linearizes, uh, assume that your lift um, is uh, along a linear curve. Therefore, um, this is OK for fixed wing vehicles 
but it quickly falls apart if you are testing vehicles such as VTOLs where the flight envelope is big. So um, we added a uh, support for JSB SIM where you can uh, simulate complex aerodynamics and um, uh, where uh, you can put in uh, uh, um, uh, wind tunnel data uh, to simulate the uh, more realistic dynamics of the simulation uh, the, of the vehicle. And uh, we also, um, to help the workflow, we also integrated um, the simulation into ROS. Um, yeah, so that's um, all from my side. Thank you very much for listening. All right, thank you, Jay. We have a few questions. Let's see if I can turn on my video here. Okay, uh, Jay, we have a question, a couple of questions that will be awesome if you can help us uh, answer. Um, can you help us uh, on sharing your screen? Uh, quick, yeah. so you can... All right, so let's see. Uh, can you talk more about the link between Casivo and high uh, quality graphics intensive environments like Unreal Engine and Unity? Um, yes, so um, uh, PX4 simulation is designed to not be limited to certain simulations uh, since it use, uh, as long as you can integrate into the Mavlink Hill interface. Um, an example of this is the Microsoft AirSim, which uses the Unreal Engine to simulate uh, photorealistic environments. And um, yeah, you can basically integrate um, yeah, into any simulation as long as you uh, integrate the Mavlink Hill interface to make uh, the simulation and the flight stack talk to each other. Awesome, thank you. Um, can What is the gazebo world that you showed on slide 15? <laughs> Um, it's called the uh, Baylands uh, world, uh, which was actually contributed by uh, OSRF, and uh, awesome. it's a very nice uh, environment to test your operating scenarios. Yep. Um, question, is there a, a special plugin from Wind and Mist on Gazebo? Uh, yes, it's called the Wind plugin. And the wind influence is considered into both lift drag and also um, the motor dynamics. Awesome. Um, we have a question. Can you import a SOLIDWORKS drone into model into Gazebo? Uh, sorry, I didn't understand. I think someone has a SOLIDWORKS uh, drone model and they want to uh -huh. uh, add um, it to Gazebo. Yes, yes. Uh, but SOLIDWORKS um, it only contains geometric properties of your uh, vehicle. so. You would need to create a mesh out of it and then um, uh, define the pro uh, physical properties using the uh, SDF format. And um, you can do that. Uh, you can uh, simulate your vehicle by doing that. Awesome. Um, next question is to simulate an aerodynamic behavior for a fixed wing, is JSB seem better than Gazebo? And can you parameterize some of the aerodynamic coefficients of that platform? Uh, can um, you do that? So the answer is yes, it is possible to simulate better flight dynamics as um, the focus of JSB Sim is to actually do it. And it is one of the simulations that are widely used in also um, the manned aerospace sector. Um, Awesome. And then very last question, uh, can the aerodynamic issues in Gazebo be something that is something that can be fixed or is it more inherent than the design decisions? Um, so the answer is yes, but um, the focus of the Gazebo simulation is to test your software components and um, not necessarily try to uh, model your dynamics accurately. So um, it might not be worth uh, investing the computational cost of simulating uh, accurate aerodynamics in gazebo. And that's one of the reason why it is um, assumed a simplistic model. Uh, so you can actually focus on testing your software rather than the dynamics. 
All right. Thank you, Jay. Thanks for your time today. That was a really awesome talk. Thank、um, you very much. Honored to be here.